everyone. So welcome to episode 21 of the Whip It podcast. I'm Cassie, your host, also known as Crafty Cassie here on YouTube and Ravelry. You can also find me on Instagram as Cassie Hills. We do have a group on Ravelry, so if you'd like to join that, go ahead on over there. Um, it is fairly new, so there's not a whole lot of threads started. I'm working on writing up the show notes for episode 20. Um, that was an extremely long podcast, and unfortunately, it took me like four days just to upload it. So that's why it's going to seem like I've got two podcasts so close together. Um, it's because episode 20 was an hour and a half. So hopefully this episode will be closer to the 30 minute mark. Um, I actually have to start getting ready in about 30 minutes for work for today. So, yes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get into finished objects. So, the first thing I have finished is this guy. And this is a uh, baby hat, my 21st baby hat, so of this group. And I want to say it's the fourth or fifth set I've donated since I've lived here in um, Oak Harbor. So, yeah. Um, this is crocheted using, here it is, a F size hook or a 3.75 millimeter. There we go. And the way I'm doing it is very simple. So I'm doing magic loop, crochet 10 into it. Um, the next round I double, so I increase every stitch. And then I do a round of singles. And then I do another set of um, a full round of increases, another round of singles, and then every other one it's a one and then an increase. So, and then it goes straight into the body of the hat for about 25 visible rows. And by that, I mean, because it sits pretty flat on top. So I sit it here and I try and see where I get almost a full row visible here. So from here, wherever I see the first vis visible row above that curve is going to be... Um, where I start my count for 25 rows. So it's, it's easy, it's quick, I can do them in two hours. Um, I just need to sew in the ends. Uh, on pretty much all of them, I've sewn in the ends on a couple of them, but not all of them, so that is something I need to work on. Another finished object is actually a Cozy Memories um, quilt square. And I'm doing it more of a quilt style for my first one because I don't know if I'm going to have enough yarn or enough sock yarn um, to actually make a full Cozy Memories blanket. Um, I'm just now getting into Cozy Memories, my Cozy Memories blanket, so um, I don't have a whole lot of projects complete. And I actually, one of my finished objects, I don't even have enough yarn to put a square in my Cozy Memories blanket. I used up just about the entire skein on the um, socks, so that is, so what I finished is I did the border, and I did the border out of Knit Picks Palette Yarn in the color Doe, and it's just a neutral color. We wanted something with a little bit of warmth, um, which is why we went with the, the warmer brown, but we wanted a neutral at the same time too, so it wouldn't detract too much from the um, colors of the square. And as you can see, I have all of the ends to sew in. Yay! That was sarcasm in case you couldn't tell. So, um, I'm really bad about sewing ends until the last minute. Sadly, I, th I think a lot of people are. Um, and then my third finished object, because I've been that good this week, is another pair of socks from my box of socks cowl. Or, yes, cowl. And it's actually residing, they're in my box of socks right now. So, I have the box here, sitting right next to me. 
and these are a pair of Kristen's of Volan Vine Yarns. This is her favorite sock pattern. This is the largest sock size or uh, cast on um, stitch count. I used US size 2 needles and uh, the yarn is Ba Yarns in the Lahola color or Lahola base and the uh, London Blue um, colorway. I got this in a Fiberista um, subscription box and uh, it's for a coworker of mine. I dared him to um, lick a uh, burnt electrical connector. Uh, we work in electronics and he took it. He asked what the prize was. I was like, I'll, I'll knit you some socks. He's like, uh, yeah, I'll do it. So he, he did it and now his socks are done. Um, he knows they're done, he's waiting on them, but I want to take photos um, of them and everything. And uh, that makes sock pair number nine. It would be 10, but I don't have my mother-in-law's socks, so I can't count her pair um, in my cowl because um, part, one of the rules is um, they all have to be in the box to count for the box of socks cowl. So, cheers. Um, oh, my mug is actually brand new. I just got it yesterday. I had a girl's day with my best friend and we saw this at the grocery store. It says Eye of Newt. Isn't it cute? Um, and what I have in here is coffee. It's the same coffee I had last time. It's the caramel, vanilla, medium roast, mountain, green mountain, something or other. I don't know. It just sounded really good when I read the box and I love it. Uh, I also put a pump, no, because I've got 10 ounces of coffee in here, I put um, two full pumps of Starbucks caramel uh, syrup and then um, the remainder of my sweet cream coffee creamer, so it's sweet, mm -mm -mm. but very tasty. It's a little, it's not quite as sweet as, as I've been drinking it, but it's still really good, so. Um, that is all of my finished objects. Oh wow, it just got really dark in here, and I'm sorry about that. Um, we are going into winter time, well, fall, but Woodby Island really just has two seasons, and that's light and dark. Um, because we're so far north, we actually only get like five hours of sun, it seems like, during the, the winter time. So the days are definitely getting shorter and they're getting grayer. So I think that's something I'm going to have to invest in when I get into my own craft room is better lighting for sure. So that is all of my finished objects for this week. I'm gonna move into whips because that's what this podcast is all about. So you're probably wondering why I chose Whip It as my um, podcast name and it's because I'm notorious for starting projects and never finishing them. And that's not just yarn related, that is every related like any kind of craft I touch I'll start it and then I never finish it I'm horrible about that so I thought you know what I need something that's gonna help me finish up my whips and um, give me kind of like a, a, a visual reference mm -hmm. sorry about that give me a visual reference of what I'm completing and how long it's taken me to complete projects so let's get into what this podcast was meant for Oh, I just lost the bobby pin. No! Okay. I'll find it. It fell to the floor. It's good. I'm going to start with this guy. This is the start of another baby hat. Now, as you can see, I'm at an end already. So I need to hurry up and finish some baby yarn or break out another skein. I have a half, I have a partial skein underneath my desk here. 
um, but it's gray and I have a lot of gray in this set so I was hoping for some different colors um, but yeah. so this yarn is the same as the finished hat I did earlier this is not the wrapper the wrapper's got to be out of my table but it's um I want to say it's loops and threads baby yarn in the colorway daffodils so super easy super fast goes right through it so this week I also have another sock uh, on the needles and this is another Volan Vines favorite sock pattern basic vanilla socks um, and this is in the smallest cast on count um, and I am using oh my goodness I, I was just at the yarn store Northwest Yarns and they told me who it was and I forget but it's in the color it's a sock blink and it's in the colorway arcade and it's a local dyer to us no they're based out of Oregon um, that's what it is but I really like it it's turning out great this is the secondary sock and I'm on the heel flap currently um, I've kind of just been working on this randomly I haven't really been sitting down and working on it while watching TV um, this has kind of been my work project too so when I don't have a whole lot of like I'm working and but my gear is running and it's um, I'm just there to make sure I press continue so they can go on to the next test set. I'm not actually physically doing anything with my hands. So I like to knit to keep myself busy. I mean, I could clean, but who wants to clean? And we clean up at night after work or towards the end of the shift anyways. So I just, I just knit. Unless we're so bogged down in work, then I, then I won't. Then I'll pick up, you know, some tools and go monkey around. The next finish, not finished, but whip I have is this guy. And I showed you guys last time I was there. See where that stitch marker is on the body of the sweater. And I have since finished a sleeve and I'm working on the garter stitch bind off oh, it's so dark in here um, garter stitch bind off on the body and then I will pick up the next sleeve and I will be done I'm not done I gotta pick up for the button loops um, the button band and the loop band and then then it will be done um, so that's exciting um, I'm probably going to try and crochet some baby socks, um, out of this yarn too, just to go with it. So, the yarn I'm using is Baby Bee Sweet Delight in the Chocolate Colorway. And this is 60% acrylic, 40% polyamide. It is super soft for acrylic and stretchy. That's what I really love about it. And then the the blue up here is um, blue baby camo or blue blue boy camo. I'll just grab it. Uh, blue baby camo, yeah. Looks like that. So. Um, the pattern I'm using is the Sweet uh, Baby Sweater pattern on Ravelry. I know I'm running out of storage. Um, ducks. Yeah, the Sweet Baby Sweater. I'm pulling it up on my iPad or uh, Kindle for you guys if it'll load. Um, it's super simple. It's got a raglan sweat or a raglan um, increase on the shoulders, and then you um, drop off the sleeve stitches and knit the body, and then you pick up the sleeves, knit the sleeves, do the button band, done. So. 
So this is what it looks like. Sorry for the glare. Super cute. Um, it is a free pattern. So you can get it relatively inexpensive. So, of course it's inexpensive. It's free! Um, I don't know what's going on with me, but yeah. So that's pretty much what I've been working on. I have been pretty monogamous in knitting this just because um, I really want to get it off the needles. Now, sad thing is, though, it is going to be way too big for my nephew. Oh, I might say what kind of needles I'm... I'm knitting this on US 5s. Yes, US 5s, which is a 3.75 millimeter needle. Um, this was intended for my nephew Kalen, but it's way too big for him. He's a, he, he's a big boy and he is growing super fast. Like he's almost out of his six month old clothing already at four months old. Um, like they're looking a little snug on his butt kind of thing. But um, with that said, this is more of like a 12 to 18 month old sweater and maybe even older, um, which means that he's not going to be able to wear this until around next summer. <sighs> maybe as early as spring. So, though the springs are colder here, um, especially with the wind, I, I don't know how much use he's going to get out of this sweater before he outgrows it. So, this was my very first knitted sweater. Um, is, not was, is my very first sweater. So, and it has started sweater fever, fever for me. And um, <laughs> especially now that we're getting into that time of year when sweaters and scarves and layering and everything else like that, all of your hand knits are the most useful. And actually, you know, it's, it's <laughs> my supervisor, because I was talking about how I wanted to be home because I just wanted to knit on, on baby sweater. And, you know, this, the, the sweater weather is really making me think, you know, is really getting me in the mood to really make some, you know, my size sweaters. And he's like, wait, would you call it sweater? I was like, really? That, I was like, I, I can't be mad because it's kind of cute. So he has coined the term sweater. And um, so I think that's, you know, that is definitely going to be the name of this podcast. It is because it is. It is sweater. And so that was, uh, yeah. He knew I was going to use that term here. I, I did forewarn him that I was going to mention the conversation on the podcast. And he just, he cracked up. That's all. So, um, that is everything that is, no, no, I take that back. I have another whip that's actually complete and I totally forgot about it. So, because this is, oh, and I left a purchase in the room, living room. I'll show you guys next time. Anyways, so, last week I showed you guys the singles of some yarn I was spinning. So, we're actually going to move into the next segment, which is spinning, because it is also going to kind of overlap with acquisitions. Yes. So, we're going to segue those two sections together today, this week. Um, here is the plied singles now. And it's not plied together, it is a two-ply. I didn't break up the bobbin. I actually bought some thread from my local waif. And I want to say it was quilting thread. I'm not sure about that. Don't quote me on it. Um, but they came on little bobbins like this. And 
I had chosen colors that match the fiber that I was spinning. And I actually ended up using six bobbins, six complete bobbins, and a partial of a seventh, um, which is the remainder of this guy here. So that was third bobbin. This was the first bobbin. Go ahead. And this is the second bobbin. So I got quite a bit of um, fiber here, and I got several colors. I've got some purples and some greens. Uh, which were the colors that I chose that matched the fiber that I had spun. And what I had spun was from Be Myself on Etsy, and it's the Colorway Frolic in the Falkland base, and it was 4.7 ounces. So I'm not exactly sure how much I got in yardage. Um, I do need to set the twist. That's why they're still on the bobbins, because I need to do that. And I was able to my first project, my first spinning project, on my very own spinning wheel. Oh yeah! So that's an acquisition. I bought a spinning wheel and my first project complete on it was the Falkland, um, the Be Myself f uh, Frolic Fiber. Um, so I was really excited about that, that I was able to finish it. So, yes. Um, so now that, you know, that I have bought some things, let's go ahead and finish off into acquisitions. So, speaking of bobbins or spinning wheel, I bought my, I finished paying off my spinning wheel. I'm super ecstatic about that. Um, and I decided, pretty punch. Huh. Maybe that's the brand. It looks like it. They're all kind of stamped with it, yep. So I bought a bunch of thread. And actually, it is... And I left the greens and purples on the dining room table. Anyways. So this is what they came looking like. Um, I did get them at my local animal shelter, which also happens to have a thrift store touch. So I bought all of the bags of this thread that I could find. So I've got yellows. Blues, grays, oranges, black, brown. Uh, cream or ecru pinks that was dark pinks we've got reds Whites. I'm running out of space up here. Light pinks. And light blues. Now I've got greens and purples are out in the living room. Um, I also bought a teaspoon. Um, strainer for loose leaf tea and a basket to keep all of the threads in for now. Um, eventually this is going to be my project basket for when I get my own craft room, but until then it's just going to hold all of my threads for spinning. Like I said, I was able to actually use up some craft supplies and I used up 
six and a half bobbins of thread. Um, and I finished up a bag or a skein of the yellow yarn. So I am using up my yarn. It's not just sitting and collecting dust, I promise. Also, I got this guy. And you're probably wondering, more yarn? Because yes, it is more yarn. I'm just going to pull out two of the skeins, the two colors that I bought actually. I bought a sweater's quantity of this color, which is just a real true um, yellowy orange. And this guy, which I've actually shown before, just in a different base. And this is Madeline Tosh Twist Light. 75% um, Superwash Merino and 25% Nylon. And these are in the colorway Aquarius and Aries. Yes, Aries. So Aries was on the sale. Uh, so I got enough of for a sweater quantity. And I'm going to be making the Tin Can Knits um, flax sweater in my husband's size. So I made sure I bought more than enough to knit him that sweater. I bought, I, I think I only needed like four skeins, like three and a partial skeins for his size. And I got five just to be safe. Um, and those are Madeline Tosh exclusive limited edition dies um, for this year for Jimmy Bean's wool. And that's where I got it. It's the, it's a fingerling weight and it, I love the colors. They're just so variegated and beautiful, but more of a tonal rather than um, a variegated. So that's, I got that. I need to make some room here. I have my laptop here on the desk here while my yarn projects are, and it's blowing hot air because it's overheating my laptop. So I'm going to make some room to allow the fan to push out the heat so I don't overheat my laptop. And I got one final item, and it came in this one. This happens to be my Fiberista monthly club subscription. Um, this came the day after or two days after I recorded my podcast uh, episode 20. So I was like, really? I missed it by just a couple of days. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and leave the card uh, and it has FC 100 Ravens. Ah, uh, September. I knew it was the first of the month as soon as images of changing leaves and pumpkin spice everything and even a few holiday decorating ideas started to appear in my newsfeed. It's still warm here in Chicago but judging by the quick turn the weather is supposed to take next week the air will be crisp and light and refreshing soon enough. It's time to get busy with making. Don't you agree? For me, the fall is a season known for stirring up the senses. A bright display of nature's colors will hit us here in Chicago before things turn gray and white for the winter. The taste of the season will bring will begin to permeate everything, including my beverages. I pretty much live on apple cider and pumpkin spiced anything during this time of the year. In a tribute to my favorite season, I had one goal with September's shipment, encapsulate the senses. This month's featured yarn is a custom palette from 100 Ravens, directly inspired by our mood boards. These exclusive colorways are captivating, much like treetops will be in just a few short weeks. To ground you within the upcoming season, you should have been greeted by a wonderful scent when opening your club packages. Enjoy both of these fall infused teas while you settle into your fall making. They'll keep you centered and focused as well as inspired. This month's patterns are actually already released and I'm going to show them to you. So, yes. So actually this month was really good. It was wrapped up in silver tissue paper. I really liked that. That was a nice, nice upgraded touch. I don't know if that's gonna continue, but that's what mine came in this month. And then the yarn and the free gift are in here as well. Let me go ahead and take those out tissue paper set. So the extras are pumpkin spice decaf tea by Stash. So I got two. 
I'm going to try one. I'm not a big fan of pumpkin spice. I know. I'm sorry. It's sweater and I don't like pumpkin spice. Like, it's like half the season. But I'm not into it, guys. I'm just... I'll eat a slice of pumpkin pie with a big ol' helping of whipped cream, but that's about as far as I go for pumpkin. So, I saw this in my package, and I swooned. I, my favorite color for the fall are burgundies. It's beautiful. It's a tonal burgundy red. You can see those lighter bits here and here. And then it's got deeper burgundies like in here. It's just gorgeous. So this is 100 Ravens in the Iachos base, which is 400 yards, 100 grams, 100% merino wool. It's a fingerling two ply. It is super wash. And this is in the colorway Thalaros, Thalaros, I believe. And it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm half tempted to go on to Fiberista and buy a couple more skeins of this just so that I can make a sweater out of this because it is bootimous. <sighs> so pretty. I don't even want to wear it on my feet. I want to wear it on my body, on my shirt, because I would totally rock that with a pair of black jeans and black boots. And yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this month's patterns we got sandness shawl we got the rosemma wrap which looks like that. I'm gonna see if I can get a full body because that's only. There we go. Which looks like that. It's actually really pretty. And we also got a hat, which is beautiful textured patterns. And this is the skyscraper hat. Looks like there's other um, patterns in that collection that would be really pretty. We also got the transformation shawl. Which looks like that. It's also really pretty. It's more it's interesting. That's a crochet pattern. Then we got the fizz scarf. And then we got the uh, bigger on the inside, which I'm assuming is a Doctor Who reference. It's a really pretty sock pattern too. Though if I'd gotten the blue, I probably would have done the bigger on the inside um, pattern for the socks. Instead I got red, so, and I really want to do it in a shawl. So, I'm actually gonna pause right here. I need to uh, go take care of some things real quickly. I need to grab some, a couple of things, and I will be right back. So I'm back. I had to go and get one final acquisition. I got it the same day I went and bought my spinning wheel uh, because I'm horrible like that the receipt so I bought I go ahead and try and <gasps> hey so the sock blank is actually made my fiber so good news is I know who it is it is green wood fiber 
yeah, fiber works. And this is 50% yak and 50% silk. And this is in shades of turquoise. I'll go ahead and see if I can coil it up a bit for you guys. You can see the whole braid, not just partial of it. And this is absolutely gorgeous. I'm hoping that the blues will really pop and so will the grays because there are all of that in there. So this is it. This is Shades of Turquoise. You can kind of see the silvers there. It's beautiful. Then I got this one. Same blend, same makers, and this is in the Blue Eyes colorway. And it just looks like that. It's got blues and greens and some brownie uh, silvers in there. It's, again, more beautiful. And I actually went back for this one. I wasn't going to buy it at first, and then I couldn't. I was like, Christ, you only live once. So then I got this guy. And this is Paper Roses. Looks like that. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's reds and mauve and um, green, like olive greens and some silveries and... Um, burgundies. It's just reminded me a lot of um, like a rose bush and fall all in one. Um, there were some ones that had Stellina in it and I really wanted to grab one of those but for whatever reason the fiber, the colored fibers just they didn't seem cohesive to me. It seemed more like a um, a party going on in the fiber and there was just too much color going on and it was really throwing me off. So one of these will be on the fight on the wheel soon. I need to get a nitty knotty. Um, once I get a nitty knotty and um, set the twist on the fiber I already have spun, then I will throw one of these on of the spinning wheel. Until then, they're just gonna sit in the brown bag and taunt me yelling spin me spin me and I want to so badly um but I you just say I can't right now but anyways so that I believe now is everything that I have to show you guys so we're gonna go ahead and move into a quick blather segment so um if you don't really care what's going on um, in my personal life, it was great seeing you guys, and I hope to see you next episode. So, for Blather. I don't have a whole lot to talk about as uh, because my husband is doing some overseas work. Um, he actually got evacuated from the uh, work center in which he had been working at um, because a hurricane was hitting the area in which uh, the country in which he's currently at so he's supposed to be moving back to his work site today the day of the recording um, so he'll be back by the time you guys see all this um, um, so he's safe but I haven't really been doing a whole lot. Sorry, I was looking, thinking about my knitting. Um, but anyways, so he's safe. He's now, you know, back working. And he's enjoying it a lot. He's, he's basically had a whole week off. It's been <laughs> the best overseas work he's ever done, actually. Um, so, I'm excited for him in that aspect, but, and it's his last time before he will go to a new shop. Um, they're moving him 
and he won't be doing overseas work for a couple of years. So um, that would be good to have him home for more than a few weeks or for a few months soon. Um, what else? Oh, the house. Yes, the house. We just put down the payment for the upgraded furnace. So that should have been installed a couple of days ago. Um, I've still got some paperwork I need to chase down. Um, and then everything will be on track. I just scheduled the uh, drop-off date for the washer and dryer, the delivery date, which is set for October 1st. So that's exciting. And then what else? Out. So I'll have a washer and dryer soon that I don't have to pay for. That's super nice. And then what else is there? Oh, I went and saw the kittens earlier this week. They're doing great. They're being cute little kittens as usual. And I can't wait to bring them home actually. Super close to being able to. We close in uh, just under two weeks and I will have my own craft room. Yay! So that's so exciting. I haven't been packing a whole lot. I do try and pack, you know, one thing a day. Um, it's hard to do though because there's not a whole lot of room to store things or to stack boxes to uh, get packed, but I'm doing the best that I can with. Uh, what I have to work with, I guess, so. Um, what else? Work is work, as usual. Um, I'm enjoying being on nights. I definitely have a much better chain of command. Um, so, that's, that's awesome. Um, people are getting promoted that deserve to be promoted, and not just because they work really hard, like they do, but they also take care of their people too. So um, the overall feel in my work center is changing and it's changing for the better. But I'm trying to remain optimistic about it because, well, while I, you know, I can be negative and grumpy about it or I can try and make the best of what I have to work with and try and not be negative like everybody else so that's just where I'm at right now I'm I'm having fun though I'm enjoying my work again or I'm starting to learn to enjoy what I'm doing so that helps um, we're still waiting on my husband to get paper copies of him, his, his transfer. Once he has that, then his dad's going to buy our plane tickets and we're going to Thailand, people! To Thailand! Yes, his dad lives in Thailand, he has a hotel over there, and we're going to spend um, part of January, part of the new year there. So I'm not going to be taking um, vacation during Christmas, I'm going to take it after Christmas, so um, which means I'll have to work during the Christmas week, but that's okay. My husband will be home, so I'm okay with that. Um, so I've been putting in for uh, overseas vacation package with my work they need to make sure that I'm you know going someplace safe and everything so doing all of that that's been crazy um, what else it's about it that's all I can really think of so I think that's gonna be it for the episode guys so until next time I love you keep working on your whips and I'll see you next time bye